to carry the name of Umasho, to carry the name of Umbangeni, it means something to me. It means that I don't walk alone. And it means that much is expected of me. The fact that I know I don't have the luxury of being mediocre. I, I have a surname of Mbangen and that means something. So if something has my name on it, it needs to matter. Coming from PE, you know, at least my first interaction with you was when you won a SEFTA. And then obviously uh, the type of characters that you've done uh, on shows like Scandal, um, on shows like Harvest, um, and type cast roles aside. Yeah. Doesn't it feel good to be bad? Does it feel good or...? You know, a very a, a mentor of mine once said that our job as actors is not to judge our characters. Mm -hmm. Our job as actors is to love them unconditionally. Mm -hmm. So my love for the characters that I've played typecast aside, yeah. because that's a huge problem in South Africa. Yeah. Once you do something well on one end, and that's all South Africa wants to see you as. Um, I've never looked at the characters that I've played as bad because I don't have, I don't, I, that's not my responsibility as the actor. I have to love these characters as if they were my children. And whether your child is a mass murderer, whether your child is pillages and plunders, is corrupt, that's your baby. So I've never gone, oh, I love being bad. I love, I love being honest. I love being true. And so the impulse of all the work that I do, be it on, on stage or on TV, has always been, Please, Masasa, be honest. Mm. Um, I've had moments, Harvest, for instance, was incredibly intense for me because I would literally feel like this character is sitting at the edge of the bed going, play me. Like waking me up at three o'clock in the morning going, so you're going to play me today or not? What's going to happen? Um, and because I feel like such an incredible responsibility to them, I never look at them as baddies. You, the audience, decide whether they're baddies or not. Mm. I come with truth as much as I can. Um, and an incredible, unconditional love. As creative as acting is, um, as a vocation, as a chosen vocation, do you think that it could be equally destructive? Yes, yeah. if you don't yeah. manage yourself. So I used to always judge actors that are like, oh, we're method actors. So Philip Seymour Hoffman, who I love dearly, I was like, how could you go nuts? But until this character that I played by the name of Celia, took me to such incredibly dark places that I understood. So sometimes be careful what you say because then the universe goes, oh, you think you're brand new. Let me show you what that person was going through. So I remember when, when stories about Heath Ledger and the dark places that he went to when forming the joke, I used to go, babe, it's called acting for a reason, act. And then the universe went, I'm gonna teach you a lesson. But it was through this experience that I, I, I learned to have compassion for actors who surrender to the work. But I also needed to learn that you don't have to go, I got so sick, Onge. Mm. Sick, 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 sick. Because I, I care about the work that I do, because I wanted to give the best. Also, Posha Gourmet is one of the most amazing writers in, the, in this country. Stephen Pillimer was also a writer on that show. I wanted to honor their words so much, but I really, I lost myself, but it was worth it. I don't regret it because it was a lesson. A huge part of surrender is accepting or rather respecting the power of the present moment. And again, it speaks, I'm gonna go back to your Instagram because it fascinates me. Yeah. Every single post that you start with, you start with the word here. Yeah. Yeah. Every single post that you start with. Yeah. So I just want to know, like, what's your relationship with, with the here and now? What is like, what is it? When I what start, does it do for you? yeah. When I start a post with here, I'm trying as much as I can to remind myself to be here yeah. now, because life is so short and so finite. I, I, when I say here, mm. I'm reminding myself to honor and be present in this moment as much as I can. And sometimes it requires you to vocalize it, to go, I'm here. Um, 
I am living this experience as this spirit or soul housed in this body here now. This here won't ever happen again. What an amazing experience. What an amazing thought to think that, that this here will never ever happen again. Rupi Kaur, uh, the poet, in her latest anthology of poetry called The Sun and All Her Flowers, yeah. she says, trust your body. Yeah. It knows right or wrong better than your mind. Yeah. It is always speaking to you. All Ooh, women in the world. that hit me. Yeah. All women in the world, Gee. like Kleenex hit you or like... Yeah, like Kleenex hit me. Wow. What's the journey been, especially for an actress? I mean, I can imagine that it's just harder. Yeah, I, the reason why that hit me so, so deeply yeah. is because for the longest time in my life, I never felt present in this body. Mm. When I was little in primary school, I used to be called Borsi because I was tall and skinny. Um, then I, I developed a bum and now I'm no longer Borsi. So it, it's been a journey to be present in this body, but you're so spot on when you say that it is so important to know thyself, mm. love thyself, accept thyself. Mm. Listen, even saying it, like... <laughs> it's a lot. So what you said triggered memories of that, of, of how I've, I've fought to fit in this body, and I do now. I, I fit comfortably, unapologetically. Uh, do I wish I didn't have to go through the trauma? Yes, mm. but like I said earlier, everything serves a purpose. Everything leads to something. Yeah. And I think that journey, I mean, the timing of it has led so well yeah. um, to everything you're working on this year. Yeah. Uh, we are all eagerly anticipating um, Housekeepers in Zanzi. Isn't that exciting? Which is on the 8th. I'm very excited on the 8th of October. What has it been like just working with this type of cast? It's not the type of cast that you've usually worked with in yeah. the past. It's been amazing. Yeah. Um, I think this is an opportunity for people to see another side of Tando Tabete mm. that I think is going to be quite exciting. Mm. Also, it was quite exciting not to play a villainess. For a, change, for a change, I'm not playing yeah, someone. Yes. Yeah, I'm not playing yeah. someone who's who's. I'm playing someone who's motivated by truth. Yeah, who's who's motivated by integrity. Yes. Um, who isn't trying to harm people but trying to fix. So that was quite exciting. Um, also, again, Osamadongwa, Portia, and Stephen did such a fantastic mm. job in in creating that story that I really think it's going to be something refreshing for um, audiences to see. And you've worked with Portia before, right? I have. I, mean, I think you guys have a love, love work she's, relationship. She's, she's phenomenal. What has she meant, you know, for your career? Like... Portia sees me. Mm. In a world that, that is, is a particularly interested in putting you in a certain box, mm -hmm. it is so refreshing to meet a creative who sees you, mm. who gets you. Because I have such a deep respect and love for that incredible storyteller that is Portia, there's, there's no place that I wouldn't go for her mm. because I feel safe. Through what you said in 2017 when you said you are forever hopeful. Yeah. I think it shows in the teaching that you're doing. I think it shows again in you supporting certain causes, but do you still share that sentiment in 2018? Are you still forever hopeful? Always. Mm. Um, and I, I guess it, keeping hopeful allows for, for the sweetness of magic to happen in Absolutely. your life. Um, it's hard because life is hard, particularly it's hard in- hard to, to sustain it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be conscious and deliberate yeah. in even in the moments of, of difficulty to yeah. go and tomorrow the sun will rise. Yeah. Um, and it'll be an opportunity to try again. It's hard. Yeah. I think we, we, we sell this idea of, oh, let's just be hopeful, everything's gonna be great. But life happens in the interim. Absolutely. And so and so hope has given me resilience. Mm. Hope and joy have been those things that I hold on to when life as a creative, as a, a, a black woman, 
in this country um, has been challenging. It's the it's the hope. It's the I I desiring to be the change that I want to see in the world. So if I want to have a culture of excellence, then I want to inculcate that into my students um, because I want to be that change that I would like to see in the world. So yeah, I remain hopeful. I remain foolish.